Hi, my name is Jessica Dean, and I'm a cloud developer advocate here at Microsoft. Today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started using Visual Studio Team Services and to create a deployment out into a Kubernetes cluster in Azure, specifically using AKS. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm already logged in to my VSTS account, and I'm going to select New Project. We're going to do this completely from scratch, and we're going to walk through this together. So the first thing I have to do is give it a project name. So we'll go ahead and call it AKS Node. I don't need to provide a description, and the version control and work item process can be left as is. I'll simply hit Create. VSTS is now going to go out and create this project for me. Great. And now that the project has completed, VSTS is actually walking me along and kind of guiding me. It wants me to get started with the new project, and it asks me, where can I get this code so that I can start building and handle your deployment? So I can build from a variety of different sources. First, I can push code if I had an existing repository from my command line. I can import a repository from an external source. Uh, and importing means that I am actually taking that code from the external repository and bringing it in to a repository located within VSTS. For those who don't know, VSTS actually gives you free unlimited private repos, which is pretty cool. I can also just initialize a blank repository with a readme or git ignore, or I can even build code from an external repository. I don't have to use VSTS as my repo source. To show how versatile VSTS is, I'm actually going to choose the last option. So I'll simply click the arrow, scroll down, and hit Setup Build. This is going to immediately take me over into my build step, where it's going to ask me to select a source. I'm going to choose GitHub, because that's where my code lives, and I'm going to have to set up my connection name. So I'll go ahead and name it the name of my GitHub user. Go follow me. And then I'm going to hit Authorize Using OAuth. So this is actually going to set up the connection, linkage, all that goodness directly to my GitHub. And it can already finish doing that before I'm done speaking. Pretty neat. Now I have to tell it what repository I want it to use. So I can hit the ellipses. And I have quite a few repositories. So I'll simply type in here, build. And I see my build 18 node. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that particular project. And we'll hit Select. This is a project I already have created. It's just a simple node app with a Docker file. I only have one branch, which is master, so I'll leave that as is. Now I'm going to hit Continue. Now the next thing it's asking is, do I want to choose a template? This is going to be how I want to define my build or my continuous integration. I can start with an empty process and do all these tasks manually, or I can actually use a template that's predefined. Now since I'm ultimately going to deploy something out into Azure in a Kubernetes cluster, I'm going to see if they have a container template. So let's go ahead and up in the search field, click into that, and start typing the word container. I can see right here, I can already get started with this template predefined. So I'll hover over that and simply hit Apply. Let's see what this sets up for us. So first, I can see that it adds in two tasks for me. On the left-hand side here, we have what's called a task runner. So I can see it's already set up build and push tasks. Also, I can see that the section that's already highlighted is process. This is my build process, where I can give things like a name. And I can also specify things that's agent queue, for example. Now, if you're new to VSTS, you might wonder what an agent queue is. Agents are computers that VSTS gives you completely for free for you to use to define your build. They're computers that are going to run these tasks for you. And you can choose anything from hosted Visual Studio 2017 to regular hosted Windows to hosted Linux Preview and even Mac OS. Now, if you wanted to use your own private repos, you could simply and easily set up a priv private agent for you to use. So to do that, again, is really simple. Right from the gear icon, you could actually hover over agent queues, and let's go ahead and open that in a new tab. Take a look and see what's going on in there. And we'll explain in a later time why it may, might make sense for you to have your own private agent. So first off, I see all the agent queues I have available, which again are all the hosted ones. Now, if I click Download Agent, this will allow me to set up 
a Windows computer, an OS X computer, or a Linux computer with a VSTS agent that will create that computer and set it up as a VSTS build task runner. And all the instructions are right here from VSTS. But since we're trying to keep today's video very simple and just show you how easy it is to get started, we're not going to set up private agents today. Now, going back over to our build, we still have to define our build process. For Agent Q, since I'm dealing with Docker images and my background is Linux and open source, I'm going to choose Hosted Linux Preview. Now, we've already selected our sources. Remember, we're using GitHub. That's still correct. Now I have to define the tasks. So since we chose a template, it already added in the two tasks we need. We just need to configure them. So I'm going to leave the display name as is. And the next step is to set what type of container registry. So I'm going to actually use Azure Container Registry, where I'm going to build my image and push it out to ACR. And then for my Kubernetes deployment, I'm going to go grab that image and deploy that out. So for Azure Subscription, I'm going to drop down. This is the subscription that where my Azure Container Registry lives. So my ACR actually lives over in my Microsoft subscription. And the next thing I have to do is authorize it. VSTS is actually going to go set up all the service connection, authorization, all that goodness. It's going to do it for me so I don't have to enter in any kind of username or password or anything I would have to do from the command line when working with a container registry. Great. And now that it's set up that authorization, I should be able to move on to select my Azure Container Registry that I want to use in that subscription. I only have one, so I'm going to select that. Now I scroll down, and I do want to build an image, so I don't need to change that action. Though if I wanted to, there's a whole bunch of actions I could choose. We'll leave it as build. Now I want to direct it to my Docker file. So I'll hit the ellipses, and I can see right here the repository files that are available. Here's my Docker file. It's right at root. So I'll select that and hit OK. I do not have any build arguments. I'm going to use the default build context. The next thing is image name. This is how it's going to tag the image when it builds it and then ultimately pushes it. So I'm going to use the build repository name, and I'm going to use the build ID. But for best practice for me, I also always like to include the latest tag. And rather than adding additional image tags here, I can simply check the box for include latest tag. It makes it really simple. So for push an image, I'm going to do pretty much the same things that I did in the build an image task. The only thing that's different is I don't have to reset up my Azure subscription. It's already set up as an available Azure service connection. So I'll simply select that, reselect my container registry, scroll down again. I do want to push an image, so I'll leave that action. The image name is still the same, build repository, build ID. And I'm going to check the latest tag again. So this, again, is going to take those two tasks. It's going to build and push all the way out to ACR. No interaction on my part. I'm going to hit Save and Queue. And then it's going to confirm, is there anything else I want to change? I do want to use a hosted Linux preview. And I don't need to put any kind of commit information in here. I'm just going to save it and queue the build. Now, as soon as I hit this, VSTS is already fired off a build for me. So I can see that right here in the green. And if I click that, it's going to open in a new tab the build summary window. So I can watch as it finishes this build and ultimately push out into Azure. Now, I mentioned earlier when we talked about agent queues and hosted versus private, that there might be certain scenarios when you would prefer to use private. Specifically, when working with Docker images, you're pulling and pushing what's called layers. These are parts of the system that it's going to reuse for future builds. And when you're working on a local system, it's going to cache those layers, allowing for faster builds each time you rerun that project. But when you use a hosted agent, it's going to reset the computer back to scratch each time. So it's going to have to repull those layers each time. Therefore, the build is going to take longer each time. If you were to set up a private agent, it tends to run a little bit faster. Now I can see that in this case, it did actually run pretty fast. Again, we only had two simple tasks, so it already succeeded, and the job took only 31 seconds to run. Great. Now I can see if I click over here, again, I love how VSTS just kind of walks me through everything. I can see right from here that it already has a release button. So I want to take this image that I just built, 
pushed into Azure, and I want to release it, right? We want to deploy that to Kubernetes. Now, if you're new to Kubernetes, this video is for you because we are not going to do anything with code or deployment files or anything you might have heard of that sounds scary. We're just going to take very basic Kubernetes commands and we're going to create a deployment and then we're going to expose that deployment to the world. So to do that, again, just like in build, we can choose a template. We know that we want to deploy to Kubernetes, right? So if I start typing in Kubernetes, there's actually a deployment that was already created for me to make this super simple. So I'll hit apply and I can give my environment a name. I'm going to choose dev. And since I like working with Linux, I like keeping everything lowercase. When you're dealing with Kubernetes and other Kubernetes tools, I do recommend sticking to the lowercase spelling and casing. So now I'll close out of this. It's already named my release for me because I selected release right from build. It's already selected an artifact, which is the artifact that would be produced from the build. But I actually don't want to use this artifact. And here's why. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and choose add a new artifact. Now you'll notice by default, I can choose build, which was pre-populated for me. I can also choose Git, GitHub, and et cetera. But if I click down here and choose three more, I could even deploy right from an Azure Container Registry. Could also do Docker Hub if I have my image there, or even from a Jenkins build server. But if I click Azure Container Registry as the source of my release, this means any time that image gets pushed up into my ACR, it's automatically going to kick the release off for me. So I'm going to select that. It already knows the service endpoint because I already set that up. It already has the ACR JD test registry connected. So now I'm just going to have to choose the repo that I want. We're just going to have to scroll down and we're going to find my JLD, it's the name of my GitHub, and the build 18 node. So once I select that, can scroll down once more. I can see the source alias, leave that as is, and hit add. That's it. So now the build is going to be able to kick off the release anytime the image is pushed to my ACR. Now, to make sure that that's automatic, I can click this little lightning bolt. This is a continuous deployment trigger. It's disabled by default, but I'm going to enable it. Now my artifact and my continuous deployment trigger is set up. I just have to set up the tasks for my environment. So I'm going to click down here into task. And I do, while I'm hovering over this, I'm only going to set up today a dev environment. But in the future, if I wanted to set up QA and staging, canary, prod, it's super simple for me to clone. I could simply click down here to add a different environment under this phase, or I can hit clone, which is going to take all the tasks and everything I have in dev, and it'll clone it over into a new environment. We don't need to worry about that, but I did want to mention it. So I'm going to click down here into phase, and the first thing I'm going to see is deployment process name. We're going to leave it as dev, and I can see agent phase. Now, just like in build, I'm going to have to choose an agent queue again. So again, remember, when you're dealing sometimes with Linux tools like Kubernetes, they do work on Windows, but my background and my preference, I'm just going to go ahead and choose a hosted Linux agent again. Great. So I've selected that. I don't need to set anything else up. Now I just have to figure out the tasks. So if I wanted to use a deployment YAML file, I could choose the kubectl apply task. But since we want to keep this super simple, I'm actually going to do a different task. I'm going to do kubectl run, which is going to create the deployment for me without any YAML files or code or any of that, just one command. And then I'm also going to use the kubectl expose, which is going to create my service for me. So I have to add a second task. So I'm going to add a second deploy to Kubernetes task. And I have two in there. So let's start with setting up our Kubernetes connection. We can change the command later. Again, VSTS always walking me through. Kubernetes connection, I can hit manage. And this is going to automatically open in a new window the services page where I can set up and add that Kubernetes connection. So on the left-hand side, under new service endpoint, I'm going to find Kubernetes. Now I have to give it a Kubernetes uh, name. So I'm going to call it JDK8. Now I have to give it my URL. 
So there's my server URL. Now the last thing I have to do is my Kubernetes config. This is a file that is located on your system, whatever system you already have connected to your Kubernetes cluster. You're going to have a hidden .cube folder under your home folder. And in there is a config file that has all the SSL cert information necessary for your connection to Kubernetes. VSTS is going to need that information as well. So I'm going to simply paste that in, and I'm going to hit OK. That's it. As long as you've entered that information, your connection's already set up. So I can close this page because I no longer need it. Now, if I refresh, I should now see the connection in my drop-down menu. And I do. There's JDK8. Now, since we're keeping this super simple, I'm not going to define a namespace. But for people, again, if you're watching this video and you're new to Kubernetes, a namespace is like an environment. If you're familiar with continuous deployment and DevOps practices, you have separate environments, right, for dev and QA. Namespace is an isolated environment for your pods or your containers to run in. Your services, your secrets, anything that's created for a deployment runs in a namespace if you define it. If you leave it blank, it's going to deploy out into a default namespace. So we'll leave it blank for today. Now, I mentioned we're going to use two commands, right, kubectl run and kubectl expose. So the first command is run. Now I'm going to give it an argument. And this is the same exact command I would run from a command line. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to name the deployment, right? So the name is build 18 k 8 node. Then I'm using the image tag to specify the name of the image that I pushed in the previous build step. And then the port for my application, my node app, is running on 3000. Now the next stage, again, is secrets. So again, if you're still new to Kubernetes, when you're dealing with images in a private repository, you're going to have to set up what's called a secret. It's a Docker registry secret that stores the credential information to your container registry, wherever your private container registry might be, and it stores it for the Kubernetes deployment. So the deployment can have the permissions to go grab that image and run it. So again, we're going to have it automatically set up my secret. It knows that it's an Azure Container Registry. I'm going to choose the subscription. It's already available. I don't have to reselect it. And I'm going to scroll down and select the right registry. Now I'm going to name the secret my secret. And it's going to force update. If the secret already exists, it's going to update it with the credentials. I still don't need to enter a username and password because VSTS is going to create the secret for me. This is really cool because dealing with it on command line, it can be a little complicated. So this is the easiest way to get started. Now, that run command is set up. All I have to do is take that image and expose it. So by expose it, I mean that I want it to be externally accessible, right? I need to create what's called a service that's attached to that deployment. And the service is going to ultimately create a load balancer that has an IP address that allows me to go out and view where the app is, is located. So let's go ahead and select my Kubernetes service again. Again, we'll leave the namespace blank. And the command this time is expose. Now the argument I need to do is my expose command. So this time I've specified the deployment because I want to do kubectl expose deployment, name of deployment, which is build 18 k 8 node. The type of exposing I want to do, or the type of service I want to create, is load balancer. Again, if you're new to Kubernetes, there's three different types of services you can create. Load balancer, node port, and cluster IP. Node port and cluster IP, by default, are internal services only. They are not externally accessible. Load balancer makes your pod or your image externally accessible and actually gives it an IP address. So you'll notice the next part of my command is port 80. That load balancer externally is going to be available at port 80, normal HTTP. And the internal target port for the container is target port 3000. Now again, we're just going to set up secrets just for best practice, make sure that there's nothing wonky or any kind of weird issues. So we'll choose the same subscription again. We'll choose ACR JD test. And the name of the secret, again, was my secret. Force update secret again, and that's it. So we have two commands, kubectl run and kubectl expose. All we, that's all we need. So now I'll hit save. I can add any comments I need to here just to 
when I'm communicating with my team. But I don't need to, so I'm going to hit OK. And as soon as that saves, I'm going to be able to hit Release. So I see that that's saved, so I'm going to go ahead and select Release. And I'm going to choose that I want to create a release. Now this is going to ask, do I want to do this in the dev environment? I do. What artifact do I want to use? So the artifact, remember, was what was pushed to my Azure Container Registry. But what version do I actually want to deploy? I can scroll down here, and I can choose any of the build numbers, or I can choose latest. I chose to push the latest tag for a reason, because I know whatever build I just built was already re-tagged as latest. So that's it. I can give it a release description if I want, which I don't, and I'll hit Create. This is now going to automatically go off and create the release for me and handle the deployment. So when I hit Release, we can watch as it runs those commands. So I can see here the deployment status. But if I go over to the top middle here, it's now in progress, I'm going to see logs. If I click logs, I can actually watch as it's running each step or task as part of my definition. So it's already on the kubectl run task. And I can see that it's now completed successfully. So if I want to figure out where my uh, app just got deployed, I can do one of two things. One, depending on how fast it pulls the IP for the load balancer, I could see the output of my Kubernetes commands, just as I would see on command line. So let's take a look. I can see first off under kubectl expose, which was the command that exposed my deployment, I can see that it was successfully exposed. And if I scroll up under kubectl run, I can see the output from there. Again, I can see that the secret was created and the deployment was created. So when you're dealing again with Kubernetes, you also have what's called a Kubernetes dashboard. And that's essentially a, a viewer of all the pods and services you have available in your cluster. If you want a GUI or a, a graphic user interface of that setup and configuration, from your command line, you could type kubectl proxy and that'll actually create a proxy over to the kubectl API. So I've already done that in the background. So I have my Kubernetes dashboard up here in a, in a tab. So if I refresh this, it's gonna, we should see the new deployment add-in, and we should see our services. You can see in the top left that I do have localhost 127.0.0.1, and it's connected to an API. And this was just from running kubectl proxy. So the first thing I see under deployments, and we'll zoom in here real quick, is I do see the build 18 K8 node deployment. It was deployed a minute ago, and it was successfully deployed. If I scroll down, I can see the pod. It was also successfully created, and it is running. There's no restarts. It's been up for a minute. If I scroll down a little bit more, I can see any ingresses I have. We can talk about that in a later video. But most importantly, I see the services. That was what was created from that expose command. And we'll see here, right under the service, the build 18 k 8 node, I see the external endpoint. So when I click that, it's going to open the application we just deployed in a new tab for us. We'll zoom in so we can make that nice and big. So hello build 2018. We just took from scratch a build image, pushed it to Azure Container Registry, and then deployed that very simply with two lines, kubectl, Kubernetes command lines, right over into Azure, all from within VSTS. So now that we've finished the build and release, you're probably wondering what's next. First off, you can go check out my blog, jessicadean.com, or you can also go check out the docs page. Docs page has a wealth of information on how to get started with setting up a Kubernetes cluster, uh, setting up your deployment within VSTS, and I also blog heavily on all things containers, deployments. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, at JLDean. Reach out to me on GitHub. Uh, or if you find a doc and you're wanting to walk through it together, feel free to send me a message. I'd love to connect with you.